All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, let's come to order. So, based on what we uh, we discovered yesterday, uh, we got to spend a little more time on mole ratio and limiting reactants. So here we go. Okay. So um, it's important to first of all understand that you cannot have a fraction of a molecule. Okay. Um, you can't have a fraction of the molecule. In the simulation, it's always molecules. So there's always whole numbers of molecules. Um, once we switch gears to moles, then you can have fractions of moles. Because the mole is just a number, like a gigantic dozen. right? So you can have a fraction of a dozen. You can't go to the store and ask for a fraction of an egg. But you can go to the store and ask for half a dozen. Or like, go to Krispy Kreme. I'd like two thirds of a donut. They're going to charge you for the full donut. But you can buy a half a dozen of donuts. So we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to go through some exercises to figure out what is a limiting reactant. And once we know what the limiting reactant is, how much of the excess is left over. Any questions before we begin? All right. So here's our very simple uh, chemical reaction. Sodium and chlorine make sodium chloride. Um, it would behoove you to copy this down under, in some mechanism so you can work along with me if, you're the, uh, if you want to take an active role in your education. This isn't any of them on your, on your lab. Yeah. This is not in any of them on your lab, but they will help you quite a bit to score more points on your lab. Yeah, so based on labs that came in early, it's pretty important that we actually go over this again. All right, so in our first ex exercise, we have, uh, first we'll call this experiment. In our first experiment, we've got three moles of sodium. And these are moles, they're no longer molecules, they are full on moles. Remember, six times 10 to the 23rd things, so it's like a giant dozen. So we got six, three moles of sodium, four moles of chlorine, and we want to know how much sodium chloride we're going to make, and then whatever the excess is going to be. Now, with molecules, unfortunately, this is where the, the simulation kind of goes off the rails a little bit. Because they're using whole molecules, they can have two reactants that are both in excess. Does that make sense? If you need like three of one and four of the other, and you have two and five, then you have both of the reactants are going to be in excess. In this class, only one reactant will be in excess. One reactant will get entirely used up, and one reactant will be in excess, because we deal in moles, not molecules. Does that idea make sense? OK, so a molecule is two hydrogens and a water, or two hydrogens and oxygen makes a water. You can't split it up in a chemical reaction. Okay? In other words, you can't have a half a molecule reacting with something. Okay? You can't have a half a hydrogen molecule reacting with something. But you can have a half a mole. So if I said two molecules or two atoms of sodium react with one molecule of chlorine to make two molecules of sodium chloride, that's the mole ratio. And I could say 200 sodiums react with 100 chlorines to make 200 sodium chlorides, still following the mole ratio. And I can say two dozen sodiums react with one dozen chlorines to make two dozen sodium chlorides, still in the mole ratio. Make sense? But I could not say a half a sodium reacts with a quarter of a chlorine. I couldn't do that because there are you can't have fractions of molecules. So far so good? But I can say a half a mole of sodium reacts with a quarter of a mole of chlorine. Because a mole is just a giant number, six times 10 to the 23rd. Just like I can say a half a dozen sodiums react with a quarter a dozen of chlorines. See the difference? All right, so let's go ahead and figure out which one is our limiting reactant. Anytime you're given two reactants, you have to do two T-charts, unless it just jumps out at you. There are people who can see the reaction in their head and it just jumps out at them and they get the right answer. I'm not one of those people, so I'm going to do some math. So uh, if I have three moles of sodium, I want to know how many moles of sodium chloride I'm going to make. What goes down here? 
moles of sodium. When we're doing T-charts, whatever we have in the upper left becomes the, up, the lower right. Even if it's just one step or six steps, whatever's up here is going to come down here, and nothing will fit. Now, mole to mole. Where does the mole to mole ratio come from? Balanced equation. So sodium chloride gets a two, two and sodium gets a two. 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 I can do that math. So um, what this tells us is this. If sodium is the limiting reactant, if it is, we don't know if it is, but if it is, we're going to make three moles of sodium chloride. Again, the last unit is whatever's in the last box. And the math is 3 times 2 over 2. So this math is 3 times 2 divided by 2, which is normally 3. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So great. So what, the, what we found here is if sodium is the, in the, is the limiting reactant, we're going to make 3 moles of NaCl. If that makes sense to you, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> If you'd like me to go over it again, wave your hand around. All right, so we need to figure out what our limiting reactant is. So the limiting reactant is the thing that's going to make the least product. When I made my banana nut muffins two, say some Thursday, three days ago, when I made my banana nut muffins three days ago, I was limited by the number of bananas. The number of bananas said I could make 12 muffins, and that's it. Now, if I looked at all their other recipes, I got a lot of salt, I got a lot of flour, I got a lot of baking soda. If I look at my flour, and I, if that was a limiting reaction, I can make a hundred muffins. But my, I was limited by the number of bananas that I have, two bananas, 12 muffins. So here, we're basically saying, we're gonna look at the reactant, if this reactant is limiting, it's gonna make this product. If this reactant is limiting, it's gonna make this much product, and we choose the lower one. So, Three moles of Na, I bring my moles Na down here, and I go to moles NaCl. Then I do my stoichiometry. My stoichiometry is three times two over two, and that gives me three moles of NaCl. I'm gonna do it again with the next thing. I'm gonna say, well, what if my chlorine is the limiting reactant? And I'm gonna say, I got four moles of chlorine, and uh, there's a ratio between moles of chlorine and moles of sodium chloride. The ratio always comes from the same place. From where does it come? The balanced chemical reaction. Chlorine gets a, what number? One, and sodium chloride gets a two. So what we have here is an equation that says, if chlorine is the limiting reactant, how much sodium chloride will we make? We're gonna make eight. Eight moles NaCl. So this equation says if sodium is a limiting reactant, we're going to make three moles of sodium chloride. This equation says if chlorine is a limiting reactant, we're going to make eight moles of sodium chloride. This is my bananas. This is my flour. If flour is a limiting reactant, we're going to make 100 biscuits. If bananas are a limiting reactant, we're going to make 12 biscuits. And we choose the lower one. So we make three moles of NaCl because my sodium is my limiting reactant. Yes? Is the limiting reactant always a smaller number? No. The limiting reactant is not always a smaller number. Uh, sometimes it's a bigger number. It entirely depends upon the ratio. Okay. Sometimes you'll get a gonzo ratio that's like 5 to 2. And one that's going to be twice as big doesn't matter. It needs to be 5 times, 2.5 times bigger. So yeah, it entirely depends on the ratio. It's never the bigger number, it's never the smaller number. Okay? Um, so far, so good? If you're with me so far, give me a thumbs up. If you want to talk about it again, wave your hand around. Uh, question. question. Um, so how do you know which, like, what to write down in these boxes? Like, so the boxes that are blank, how do you know what to use and, like, where to... Um, when basically... You're, when you're doing the T-chart, like, how do you know what to use? Or... Okay. Um, excellent question. It depends upon the exercise. And this specific exercise wants to know how much product we can make based on our reactants. So we're going to take reactant number one, and we're going to go to product. We're going to take reactant number two, and go to product. And whichever one makes less, that's the one we take. That is the correct formula. Does that answer your question? Okay. 
So, now what do we need to figure out? How much excess? All the sodium is going to get used up because it's a limiting reactant. All the sodium is going to get used up. We've got to figure out how much chlorine is left over. And to figure out how much chlorine is left over, we need to figure out how much chlorine we used. So to do that, let's do another T-chart. Let's say I'm going to use all three moles of my sodium. Is the balance in the way? So this is still going with the, bye bye balance. the first one, right? No. Yes, we're still working on, uh, here, I'll make it easy. <laughs> experiment one will be blue. Perfect. There we go. Still working on experiment one. So we're going to use up all three moles of our sodium. And what we want to know now is how many moles of chlorine were required to use up that three moles of sodium. I used up three moles of sodium, how much chlorine did I need? I used up two bananas, how much flour did I need? Of that giant pile of flour, how much did I use? So three moles of sodium, so I'm gonna bring down my moles of sodium because that's what we do. Whatever goes here, it goes here. And then where does this ratio come from? The balance. balance chemical equation. So the mole of sodium gets a two, two and chlorine gets a one. one. And the mass becomes three times one over two, one and a half moles of chlorine. And that's No, that is how much I used. So one and a half is left, or? Oh no, you, okay, I get it. Okay. Anyone else get it? If you get it, give me a thumbs up. If you're still working on it, here we are. So the equation basically says to use up to react with three moles of sodium, I'm going to require 1.5 moles of chlorine, according to the balanced chemical equation. So if that's the case, I have four. I don't need four, I only need 1.5. So how much excess chlorine is there? Yeah. So there's 2.5 moles of chlorine in excess. <laughs> Yay, I get it now. That's what we're going for. We're going to do two more examples. Okay. So I get it now is what I was looking for. Because it was pretty clear we didn't get it yesterday. I have a question. Yeah. Could we have also done the 8 minus 3 to get 5 to no. 2? No. Uh, because this, this does not matter. This equation, the equation for the wrong reactant, should be ignored. Okay. And we're going to talk more about that when we look at limiting reactants. Once you figure out which one's limiting reactant, you should basically just like go postal on this guy. Just remove it. You don't remove it. Just remove it. When you know it's not. We know it doesn't matter. Get rid of it. Okay. Can we do another one? Are we ready for another one? Yeah. This next one will be red. Okay. Now in this exercise, experiment number two. In experiment number two, we have five moles of sodium, two moles of chlorine, and we need to know how much sodium chloride we make and what our excess is. So we're going to follow the same system as before. I'm going to leave this up here for now. And how should I start my first teacher? Moles of sodium. Excellent. Five moles of nah. <laughs> And uh, what am I trying to figure out? How many moles of NaCl when I react with moles of sodium? The ratio is? Two. Two, yeah. two to two. Can you see why it's two to two? Yeah. Balanced chemical equation. Can't do anything without a balanced chemical equation. And uh, this is 5 by 2 over 2, 5 moles NaCl. So what I've calculated in this exercise, or this, this example, is if the sodium is the limiting reactant, we're going to make 5 moles of sodium chloride. If. I don't know if it is. We'll find out here in a second. <laughs> Why the mole ratio is 2 to 2? 
Mole ratios are the coefficients of the balanced chemical equations. Two, one, two. It basically, the balanced chemical equation gives us the ratio of molecules, moles, dozens, gummy bears, whatever. So two of these plus one of these makes two of these. All right, so uh, what's my next step? Yeah, do it with chlorine. So chlorine is two moles of chlorine. And once again, I want to know how many moles of sodium chloride I'm going to make when I have moles of chlorine. So what number should I put in for the chlorine? One. One. And for the sodium chloride? Two. And this is just two times two over four? Or two times two over one is four? <laughs> Sometimes my, my, my brain does math faster than my, my mouth does. So this is four moles of chlorine. No, sodium chloride. Four moles of sodium chloride. And ACL. So what this exercise tells us is if chlorine is the limiting reactant, I'm going to make four moles of sodium chloride. Which one's the limiting reactant? Chlorine. Yeah. So in experiment two, chlorine is the limiting reactant, and chlorine's going to make four moles of NaCl. Is it coming into focus? Good? Starting to. Yeah. The neurons are connecting, the dendrites are extending. Alright. Cool. How do you. I don't know how to do that. Okay, so now that we know what product we made and we know what the limiting reaction is, we have to figure out how much of the other thing we needed to make that product. So we say, alright, I used two moles of chlorine. Down moles of chlorine. I used two moles of chlorine. In order to make chlorine into sodium chloride, I had to react it with moles of nah. Moles of sodium. Two, two, one. So what this means is the balanced chemical equation says for every one mole of chlorine atoms, or sorry, chlorine molecules, I'm going to need two moles of sodium atoms. Two to one. This tells us I needed four moles of sodium. Two times two is usually four. Yeah. To find the missing one, do you always use the two reactants, or can you use the product? Oh okay, yeah, yeah. You could totally use the product. You could say, in order to make four moles of sodium chloride, I needed this much sodium. You could have, totally could have done that too. I know. So you the same. Yeah, absolutely will. Yeah. Everybody hear that? No. So uh, Mason mumbled earlier. Um, if do you have to use a reactant here? Could you use the, the product? You could start this with four moles. Well, let me show you. You could say, well, I made four moles of NaCl. And uh, to make four moles of NaCl, for every one mole of NaCl I make, I'm going to need one mole of sodium. It's going to be the same thing. Okay. You could say, for every mole of sodium chloride I make, I need a mole of sodium. Um, it's actually on the last you do the, but, So you, you know, you know how you got the 2.5 for the excess? Yes. So why don't you do the 3 minus 1.5 for the sodium? To find the because sodium. all the sodium got used up. The sodium got entirely used up. I had 3 moles, I used 3 moles. The chlorine did not get used up. The chlorine was the excess reactant. I had 4 moles, I only used 1.5. Does that answer your question? Kind of, but kind okay. of not. The limiting reactant gets wiped out. Entirely used up. So I used up all my bananas. The limiting reactant gets entirely used up. Are we cool? Should we move on? Moving on? All right. So, I used four moles of sodium. What's my excess? One. 1. 1.0, 1. 1. 1.0 moles of Sodium. How are we feeling about this? Feeling better? Okay. I'm going to erase this and do experiment three. 
Can I erase experiment number one? Experiment three? Yes. Now in experiment three, this is what got a lot of people in the lab. You're like, but it doesn't give me the reactant. Ah! You still set it up the same way. You say, all right, I have X moles of sodium. The box meaning X. I have X moles of sodium. And for every so many moles of sodium, I'm going to make moles of sodium chloride. Two to two. And I'm going to make three moles of sodium chloride, because that's what it said. I made three moles of sodium chloride. So you can work backwards and say, all right, um, that means the sodium has to be what? Three. Three. Has to be three. I needed three moles of sodium chloride. Sorry, sorry, sodium. Three moles of sodium to make three moles of sodium chloride. It's really just that simple. Okay. And uh, okay. So are we good so far? Now let's make sure that we're right. Is so much. Let's make sure that the sodium is actually getting entirely used up. Because we needed three moles, but maybe we had more. So let's make sure that the chlorine was not the limiting reactant. So let's set our four moles of chlorine. And then we're going to convert moles of chlorine to moles of sodium chloride. What's my ratio here? Huh? Two to one? Two to one? Who can raise their hand and tell me, what does this equation tell us? In your own words. Why is it not the limiting reactant? Because the three is less than eight. Can you, uh, you can't do starboards because you have braces. 